Hey guys! I know I got a lot of questions about the monarch butterfly. It's amazing to have witnessed the journey. My son and I were so excited. Um, we've been butterfly fans for as long as I can remember growing up. And luckily, Dennis also is a fan. So um, I learned some new things that I never knew and I actually got a first-hand experience of the monarch and how to raise one from birth, from uh, egg to caterpillar. So Dennis, um, I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions since I've had a lot of questions from you guys, from a lot of my friends interested in also raising monarchs and helping the monarch population because it is a challenge for them to grow. And if we help them, they have a higher chance to repopulate. Um, and so um, hopefully this inspires you guys to, to help the cause in order to save the monarch butterfly. Step one question that everybody asks me, okay. what do I need to get started in raising my own monarch butterflies? Um, okay, by no means I'm no expert, but the way I started, um, the first thing you need is uh, you're gonna need a milkweed plant, okay. um, which I found it difficult to find, at least at the chain stores, like Home Depot and stuff. But I think people tell me you could find them like at your local like garden suppliers. Okay. They might have some, but anyways, the way I did it was by actually buying milkweed seeds out on Amazon, mm -hmm. and then, and that's a whole long process in and itself. Okay. Um, so, if you want to know about that, um, so milkweed, you get the seeds, you have to kind of stratify them for, stratify the seeds. yeah. So that means basically put them in the fridge for about thirty days. Okay. Um, so in a sense, that activates the seed. So. Once you take them out and you plant them, um, they grow. Nice. So that's how I started. Okay, so then growing my own milkweed. Yes. So number one thing, grow milkweed. Monarchs will only lay eggs and grow on milkweeds. No other plants. So you can buy a, a butterfly kit that they sell on the stores if you're interested for your kids on Amazon, which is popular. Um, however, it's not necessarily going to give you a milkweed. And I think I find more value in actually doing it the natural process so the kids are able to observe how the plants give life to these butterflies and and in an essence you're not just doing it for entertainment purposes by planting your own milkweeds you're helping the ecosystem and you're helping future lives future generations of butterflies so I think it's wiser to invest on milkweed learn about it plant it instead of going the other route another question how do i know there's monarch eggs on my milkweed i've had some people ask me some of my friends that already have milkweeds okay how That's, do i know that it's a monarch egg they're just like this little pin size white egg usually underneath the leaves underneath so. the leaves yeah that's the tricky part i i was what are things i should look out for um once i see those eggs and what are some things i should look out for to ensure my caterpillar grows. What do I do when I see a caterpillar? <laughs> well, you want to make sure your milkweed's healthy, not infested, okay. for one. Um, and then once it's growing, um, well, I guess it depends. Like, I don't know if you're growing your milkweed in a pot or it's already in the soil. Okay. But in my case, I was growing them in pots. So I had to, because the, they have a lot of predators. Um, this mm -hmm. is my first year doing it. So I noticed a uh, wasp will actually come. So then, um, how do I know when my caterpillar is ready to turn into a chrysalis? A chrysalis is uh, the thing that forms. It's not really a cocoon, but we grew up thinking the name of cocoon. Um, that's when a caterpillar turns into a chrysalis. And I'm going to ask Dennis, when do I know it's ready? And you'll notice that it'll start hanging from its tail, basically on a plant. And yeah. it'll start creating a web on it, so you don't want to touch it or try to pluck it off. Yeah, so it's a very delicate stage. Yeah. I saw it actually, it was already fat, it was big, and it kept moving around the pot, and it kind of wanted to escape. And so I saw it actually go on the edge. Luckily, I was grilling burgers that day outside, so I was able to see it. And then it just fell off the pot, and it just was walking around the ledge. It wanted to get out. So in, right away, I knew, okay, He's pretty big, he's moving around, he doesn't want to stay. He's looking for a place so he can turn into a chrysalis. He's like nesting, as we can yeah. say. So leaving the food source. Leaving the food source. So that means he's he's looking for a place. It, it kind of reminded me of a of a fetal position. He kind of just made a U shape in the little oh, yeah. pencil. Yep. So I provided a pencil 
that was at a certain angle that would stay put by the rock. On average, it takes 10 to 14 days before um, the caterpillar uh, turns into a chrysalis. Uh, sometimes they will actually do it on the plant, on the underside of, of the leaf. Okay. That was my first time. Uh, on this last time, actually, because I had him in a kind of like a box mm -hmm. with a, you know, a window screen. Window screen. Yeah, on top. So it couldn't leave. So once it was done, it actually just went on top and it created it up there. Okay. During chrysalis, during the 9 to 14 days, um, what can I expect? What, what, what am I looking at? If I'm like, for example, me, I was looking at it every day, <laughs> every mm -hmm. hour if I could. You're gonna expect for it to be in chrysalis for 10 to 14 days. There's With not really color, shape, what's going on. <laughs> There's here. not much you can have to do, but yeah, it's um, normally they're a pale green color, and and after probably like I'll say a day or two, you start noticing getting uh, little gold specks and uh, beautiful colors on the chrysalis. Beautiful colors. Well, just the uh, yeah, gold and black, but it looks beautiful and. Yeah, you'll it'll be in that state for well, on average ten to fourteen days. Oh, once weeks. it's yeah, and once it's ready to emerge, you're gonna the chrysalis is actually gonna become transparent. Yay. Yeah, and you're actually gonna be able to see the wings of the butterfly inside. And by that point, it should be moment, coming out within hours. those twenty four hours. Yeah. So in our case, um, in our case, um, we saw the transparent chrysalis and it was like 3 a.m because i keep checking my butterfly and so like by the time we woke up in the morning it was already a butterfly so it's it can happen any moment so definitely the last stage the transparent once you see the wings that's it you're ready to be almost a monarch butterfly parent so once that happens once the butterfly comes out it's gonna come out do i help it come out what what happens what do i do now that it's free out of the chrysalis <laughs> usually it takes a full day for them to get you know get their wings hard enough and everything but in our case it wasn't right he took yeah, off he was ready within the he six was, hours he was a big caterpillar and yeah. a big butterfly beautiful baby it's beautiful and how do you know it's male because of the two dots oh, oh my goodness Wait, what do you do? i know hey i want to see a butterfly do you want to grab it puppy Okay, don't move, okay? It's gonna say hi to your puppies. Hi. And say hi to Ivan. It loves you. It loves you. It loves you. Can I feed it? Should I feed it? Um, technically, you should feed it if you keep it more than one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it's nature. Nature does this thing. So I know as we we're concerned, like, oh, do we need to feed it? Yeah. What should we do? It's, it's going to be okay. Maybe. But no, they, they have their thing. They know what they're doing. You know, like in nature, they hatch and then they take off. Mm -hmm. The only need to feed it is like if uh, we selfishly keep it yeah. for more than a day. Because at that point, it's not natural if we for them to be. Mm -hmm. I had mine. I gave it uh, just an orange, okay. uh, actual orange. I cut it, squeezed out some orange juice, nice. and I fed that to it. I know you could also give it um, mm -hmm. organic honey, probably. With mixed yeah, with water, right? Yeah. Uh, ratio being um, one to six, mm -hmm. one of honey, six parts water. Okay. And other than that, it'll do its own thing. It's outside, it'll fly away. So to fly yeah. it, to free it, you just kind of let it go and yeah. it just leaves, it goes. And it's a sad thing because you spend almost one whole month with that. Yeah, bittersweet. It's sad, but it's beautiful. It's it was one big takeaway from from learning about the monarchs firsthand. One big takeaway. Uh, they're amazing, beautiful creatures. Uh, you know, it's just amazing what they do, their transformation, and what's that word I used earlier? Gracious. They're so gracious when they're flying away. <laughs> Almost like a kite. The kite. It, just I feel like it's a like a glide out. A glide, yeah. One major takeaway I took was that monarch butterflies are so fragile, and they the stages are very very fragile. It's very sensitive, so their chances of living sometimes is very low of surviving because, like Dennis mentioned, the bees, the birds, they'll like eat them more when they're barely eggs or tiny caterpillars. Yeah. 
and even when they're in chrysalis yep. they're so vulnerable. vulnerable they're vulnerable yeah. they're just hanging so anything can scoop them up or anything can infest them yep. so what i the big takeaway from this experience was that anytime you see a butterfly especially a monarch it is amazing to witness one because they go through so many life cycles and so many risks to have made it to that level, to being a monarch. And that's amazing in itself. Helping them, um, helping the ecosystem and help in raising them. I believe it's it's a beautiful thing because like I was telling Dennis, like congratulations, because he grew the plants and everything. I, I feel like- From ground zero. Yes, and so far it's been with this one that I raised and he raised two, it's three now. And I told him, imagine you've given life to three monarchs that otherwise wouldn't have even existed. So mm -hmm. those are three monarchs that are flying out there, laying their own eggs, reproducing. So those are so many more generations now that you've given to the butterfly population and to future generations and their generations will go on. And even some of those generations are gonna go to Mexico to the great migration during the winter. We encourage everybody to plant because of this special way they grow so it, it helps us realize how much beautiful they are and how we should not take them for granted anyways <laughs> thank you dennis for giving me yeah. this chance to learn more about a, butterflies it was a pleasure thank and you for planting uh, me these it plants. was uh fun for me and i was glad to be able to share yes. with her and noah noah my son yeah. loved it he's five years old so this is a great activity for kids because it, it, it gets them involved and, and gives them more of a caring nature to them and um yeah, it's fun and uh, amazing, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Life is a journey, and just like butterflies, we have to have our own rebirths too. So it's very inspirational yeah. as well. So when you guys decide to do it, it's gonna be lots of fun. It's a and lot of work. I encourage you, and a lot of patience. Yes, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's beautiful. So let us know if you do try it. We want to know. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Hit her up. <laughs>